today, Dianne Feinstein went before the Senate and introduced her new assault weapons ban. And that makes me wonder, are our representatives willfully as dumb as a box of rocks? Or perhaps do they have a hidden agenda that they're hiding from the American people? I say that because their calls for additional gun control measures make little sense to anybody with an IQ larger than their own shoe size. Let's take a look at the Sandy Hook shooting and analyze the facts that we know to be true. First of all, Connecticut already had an assault weapons ban in place. Much like the new bill proposed by Dianne Feinstein, the AR-15 we're told that was used in the shooting was already banned under Connecticut state law. However, it was grandfathered, just like the new Dianne Feinstein bill. We know that the Sandy Hook School, just like the theater in Colorado, was a gun-free zone. It was a free fire zone. The attackers were looking for soft targets, and they found them in these buildings. Nobody there was armed, and everybody knew it. The police at Sandy Hook responded in, in good time, but not fast enough to stop the slaughter. The same is true at the theater in Colorado. The only people there that could have stopped the shooting, it wasn't the police, they weren't there in time, it was the people that were under attack. As I said before, the first responders aren't the police, it's the people being attacked. The police can only show up after the fact, try to catch a perpetrator, tag the toes of the dead bodies. The only people that are gonna change the outcome of a mass shooting are those that are the victims of the mass shooting. So the disarmament strategy makes little to no sense to me. I mean, we've already tried it, right? You have a teacher cowering in the corner with her children, hoping and praying that the gunman doesn't come to her classroom, but we haven't empowered her to stop that gunman should the gunman come to the classroom. It makes no sense to me that the strategy that this administration wants to push forward is further disarmament. Let's expand the gun-free or free fire zones. What kind of logic is that? It seems like the gun grabbers are comfortable with police with guns, with security guards with guns, with pilots in cockpits with guns. They're fine with people with CCWs walking around the streets with guns. They're fine with soldiers with the guns. However, when it comes to arming a teacher, all of a sudden the world's coming to an end. Oh my gosh, we can't do that. That's insanity. Really? To me, insanity is telling that teacher to sit in the classroom in a gun-free zone that every lunatic in the neighborhood knows is a gun-free zone and saying, hey, look, we're not going to trust you with a gun around our kids. Everybody else in the community can have them, but not you. The gun grabbers know that the future assault weapons ban will do absolutely nothing to stop shootings. They admit as much. However, their strategy is, is if we can save just one life, we should do anything we possibly can. If that means putting one less round in a magazine will save just one life, Boy, that's the best idea we've ever thought of. Really? How about we try something different like what Florida tried in the 1980s when they were plagued with the crime rate that was soaring? They thought outside of the box. They passed a, a CCW law giving the individual citizens the right to carry firearms concealed, and guess what? The violent crime rate plummeted, so much so that now all 50 states in the country have CCW laws, except for Illinois, who's being drugged along kicking and screaming. If we're gonna save just one life, let's do something that will actually do that. I'm not talking about expanding the free fire zones. I'm talking about letting teachers volunteer to carry firearms. Let's create a national program or a state level program that gives them the training that they need as volunteers to act as both teachers and security guards in our schools. I mean, why is that so crazy? You trust a police officer on the street with a gun. What's the difference between a police officer and a teacher? Vocation, they're both human beings. Our teachers are the first responders in our schools, and if you're really concerned with saving the life of your child, which I know I am, I say give those teachers a chance to defend my children should a madman come knocking. Let's take a look at the assault weapons ban that Diane Feinstein proposed today. In her bill, she admits that, well, you know, we're not going to take the guns away from you right now. We're going to do it later. We're going to slowly reduce the supply over time. What that means is backdoor confiscation. She has no intention of saving a child's life tomorrow. That's not even her goal. Her goal is confiscation. They don't want you to have guns. They want you to be a victim. I tell you what, folks, who obeys laws? Do criminals obey laws? By the very definition, no, criminals don't obey laws. And we know that. If you take a look at the UK, their violent crime stats are much higher than ours. They took away guns, and now people just walk into other people's homes and rob them, rape them, do whatever the heck they want because they know there's nobody in there with a firearm. We as Americans have the right to defend ourselves. We have a Second Amendment that guarantees that right, and almost all states, with the exception of Illinois, if they're coming along, all states allow for concealed carry. Now let's talk about that for a second. Concealed carry. Do I carry a concealed handgun so I can stop coming home from work and shoot a deer on the side of the road for sporting purposes? No. I carry a handgun to defend my life, the life of my family, 
and those immediately around me, at least in my state where it's legal to do so. So why are we going to restrict the citizens' ability to defend themselves? If a citizen has only 10 rounds in their magazine or seven as in New York, how are they gonna fare against a criminal who ignores laws who has one of those 30 round magazines that are evil? I tell you what, if you think that 10 round magazines are all that we need to defend ourselves with, then let's impose those exact same restrictions on the police and the military and see how long that lasts. It doesn't make any sense. Better yet, if 10 rounds is good enough for me, Ms. Feinstein, then it's good enough for your bodyguards. How about that? Mr. President, if you really want to save just one child's life, arm the good guys. We know it works. We have facts on our side. And stop this mindless grab for our firearms that will do absolutely nothing to save anybody's lives. It will only put lives in danger.